Well, good morning again. Question, what is God's due? Today we're at Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 6 through 10 are our reading. Inasmuch as there is none like you, O Lord, you are great and your name is great in might. Who would not fear you, O King of the nations? For this is your rightful due. For among all the wise men of the nations and in all their kingdoms there is none like you. But they are altogether dull-hearted and foolish. A wooden idol is a worthless doctrine. Silver is beaten into plates. It is brought from Tarshish and gold from Uphaz, the work of the craftsmen and of the hands of the metalsmith. Blue and purple are their clothing. They are all the work of skillful men. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and the everlasting King. At His wrath the earth will tremble, and the nations will not be able to endure His indignation. There is no other being like God. None are comparable in might or wisdom. There is the starkest contrast between the one true God who creates and the false gods who can do nothing. This isn't a spectrum with falser gods occurring at one end of the, of the range and, and truer gods occurring at the other end of the range. There's, there is one true God, and then there's all the others, all the false gods. That's all. And the false gods, the people of the nations, the wise men of the nations, and the inventors of religions, they bow before the false gods, the wisest people. They bow before the false gods. They bow before the false gods that cannot do anything for them, and they disregard uh, the one God who can do something for them. They treat him with indignity. And the one God who can react in indignation, they treat that way. I mean, they spend their limited energies serving false gods that, that have to be fastened so that they don't topple over. Or in a lot of modern cases, they serve certain ideologies which they just continue to pattern uh, towards. They just think that, you know, this ideology works, that ideology works. Communism, fascism, Marxism, various isms. They just keep throwing their energies after that and doing more of it. On and on. Just like walking around in a circle endlessly. And so Jeremiah sees a culture trapped in false worship and about to learn the hardest of lessons. God is the creator. Besides that, he's good. He made us. He made us to be free and good. That's the combination, free and good. And that's why he's due our worship. He's not only the only actual God, he is a good God. False gods not only aren't gods, but they're fake. They don't even, they can't do anything. They're simulcra. They are imagined by selfish humans. And they're the religions that are built up around them, whether it's a secular religion and I put those two words together on purpose, or it's a religion with supposedly a personal God or something. Either way, those false religions are used to justify human sinning. They build false realities around them, paralogics, non-realities. But in the end, you know, they're going to come up against ultimate moral reality. They'll be up against the fact that there is a God who judges according to the standard he's revealed to humans. Satan cannot win against God. Not in power. Satan's only hope is really to show God to be unfair on God's own terms. He hasn't done that, and I don't believe he's going to do that. In fact, I think Satan's program is going very poorly. You may look around you and say, I think it's going wonderfully, but no, I don't think it's going well for him at all. And you know what? Our lives actually have a small part in testifying to God's goodness. In the end, the testimony of our lives will show whether Jesus can or cannot transform people. And so your life plays a substantial role in this conflict between good and evil. Some of us call that the great controversy. You're in the great controversy. I know you didn't ask to be in it, but we're in it. Let's pray that God will have his way with us. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for uh, watching over us. The question that is comes up in this text of Jeremiah is what is due to you, God? We believe that because you are a good God, our worship is due you. Lord, we want to be like you. We want to be less selfish. We don't want to be selfish at all. Please transform us, Lord. Thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, let's team with Jesus so that by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony, Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, we will have our little part in showing that God is good. Have a wonderful day.